here why eating some high oxalate foods is a must if you want to lower your creatinine levels. Catherine here, I've been helping people lowering their creatinine levels for more than 10 years now. And today, we are going to unveil one of the biggest lies about the correct way of eating for people with renal problems. Many of you have been told to avoid foods that are high in oxalate because they are bad for the precious filters of the body. And that's just plainly wrong. Science is very clear on this. You need more fruit and vegetables if you want to stop the decline of GFR. Now, if you have been following a wrong way of eating until now, don't worry. We can still undo some of the damage and we can still improve your diet. And as a plus, you will be able to enjoy many tasty foods again knowing that they are good for you. Now guys, as usual, please consult your nephrologist before making any significant change to the way you eat. And also watch this whole video because there are certain people, about a small number, that are actually very sensitive to oxalate. They should not eat high oxalate foods without also following the simple tricks I will share with you in this video. We will see who should be careful with oxalate in a moment. Before that, a very important question. Why is oxalate supposed to be dangerous for you? Oxalates, also known as oxalic acid, are naturally occurring plant compounds. Some people call them anti-nutrients, but they are not as bad as they want you to believe. We eat oxalate in food basically every day. And also very important, our bodies do make oxalate. There are also vitamins that create oxalate and vitamins that help getting rid of them. Now, and this is crucial to understand why avoiding high oxalate foods is not the right strategy for most people. The thing about oxalate is that this compound is not stable on its own in the body. Once in the body, oxalate will want to bind to minerals before it's excreted. That's what makes it an anti-nutrient. Calcium and iron are the most common mineral it will bind to. This mostly occurs in the colon, but in some cases, this reaction can also take place in the urinary tract. Now, most people will just eliminate oxalic compounds in the stool or urine without even knowing that it's happening. Again, this is an everyday occurrence. It happens to everyone. However, in sensitive individuals, high oxalate diets have been linked to an increased risk of calcium oxalate stones and other issues. And like it happened for many other nutrients in the past, Experts have rapidly started telling everyone to just avoid foods high in oxalate. What? And that's just plainly wrong. What most experts don't know is that about half of the oxalate found in urine is produced by the body rather than absorbed from food. And guys, there's a reason why I tell you not to avoid high oxalate foods unless you really have to. Let's see it. This is a large study focused on stopping and reversing the progression of kidney function decline through the correct way of eating. This study saw people in stage 4 completely stopping the progression of GFR decline. Some even reversed advanced stages CRF. All thanks to a way of eating that was richer in fruit and vegetables. And researchers made sure not to discriminate among vegetables. There were no forbidden fruits here. So despite what some experts say, eating more fruits and vegetables, even those rich in oxalate, may directly lead to a better GFR. The reason why will become clearer when we take a look at what foods are actually the highest in oxalate. Spinach is always on top of the list when it comes to oxalate. But the thing about spinach is that this really is a superfood. Spinach is so alkaline, it directly protects the precious filters of the body by reducing the acid load. And also, beets. 
despite being fairly high in oxalate, beets have been directly linked to a better GFR. They are also rich in nitric oxide. They may even fight hypertension. Consuming beets regularly means that the artery walls are going to be less stiff, says science. And also, almonds. Almonds are so rich in magnesium that restricting them is definitely a mistake. And magnesium is a common deficiency in those with CRF that can cause hypertension and inflammation. You really want as many magnesium rich foods as you can if you want to improve your GFR. Another food rich in oxalate is rhubarb. Despite being one of the highest foods in oxalate, rhubarb is also a nutrient powerhouse. It's rich in many vitamins and fiber and contains compounds that are known to fight inflammation. Now, as we can see, most foods with oxalates are really, really good for the precious filters of the body. Some proponents of the low oxalate diet say people are better off not consuming foods rich in oxalates, but it's clear looking at this list that they are wrong. Many of these foods are the best sources of important antioxidants, fiber, and other nutrients. You are not going to improve if you remove all these foods. And we should also consider that the body produces more oxalate than it gets from foods. However, as I was saying, there are people who are especially sensitive to oxalate. So let's see. Who is supposed to actually limit oxalate intake? First of all, people prone to calcium oxalate stones. If you had stones in the past, you are more likely to get them again. And if they are calcium oxalate stones, the most common type limiting oxalate will be a good strategy. However, there are also other strategies that work and that don't require limiting foods high in oxalate. We will see how to do that in a moment and also People who have had gastric bypass surgery or surgeries that affect how the gut works may also have high oxalate levels in their urine. So if you have gut dysfunction or take antibiotics, you may want to avoid high oxalate foods. Now also, those that have to limit their water intake due to the stage of CRF they are in may be recommended to follow a low oxalate diet. You see, water is a way for the body to get rid of excess oxalate before it can do any damage. Reducing water intake puts you more at risk. But for most people, the benefits of nutrient-dense high oxalate foods far outweigh their risks. Therefore, it's not a good idea for most people to completely stop eating high oxalate foods. Today, most urologists only give a strict low oxalate way of eating to people who have high levels of oxalate in their urine. It's important to be tested from time to time to figure out if a restriction is needed. So if you are not sure about restricting these foods, get tested. Okay, this is going to be very interesting for those that want to keep eating spinach and beets despite those experts unfairly demonizing these foods. Now I bet many of you already heard about the popular antacid tums. They are sometimes recommended for people with CRF because they are made of calcium carbonate. Taking them with meals may be helpful because calcium carbonate sticks to the phosphorus in the foods you eat. The phosphorus is then removed through the bowel effectively stopping your body from taking extra phosphorus in. But there is more. Calcium also binds to oxalate as we have seen. Very important, having a meal rich in calcium means calcium and oxalate can bind in the intestines, which is what we want. On the other hand, when there is not much calcium in your meals, your body is forced to bind calcium and oxalate in the urinary tract. This may put you at risk for calcium stones. So whenever you eat foods such as spinach, rhubarb, beets, legumes and nuts, consider adding a source of calcium. And while there are just a few foods naturally rich in calcium that are good for a renal diet including bok choy and broccoli, taking a calcium supplement or a tum may also help. What's more, you don't need to buy the brand name Tums. Food grade calcium carbonate is also sold in powder or pills and costs pennies. As usual, you should discuss the correct dose and safety with your nephrologist. Calcium carbonate is, however, very safe. Another thing you want to consider is water. 
it has been observed that those with a lower water intake are more at risk for calcium stones. Always drink plenty of water. Aim for a minimum of 2 liters daily. If you have had calcium stones in the past, drink enough to produce at least 2.5 liters of urine a day. Now guys, I hope this clarifies how to avoid the dangers linked to oxate without renouncing to many superfoods. If you still have dubs, feel free to ask in comment section. And if you want to see more about the way of eating that really help restoring the precious fillers of the body, this video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching.